This is courtesy of Mixmag. It says, Anger has met police share video of street side drug swabbing in Shoreditch. I don't know what this is meant to do. I guess this is tied into what, um, what's her name? Um, what's his name? So I'm joining this. I'm not going to do it again. Like I'm turning to DSP, joining into the microphone. Please forgive me. Um, it kind of reminds me of what, what his face does. Um, what Boris Johnson was talking about in terms of clamping down on drugs, right? Somehow it feels like, you know, there's been more conversation around clamping down or people using class A, class B drugs than there has been about people talking about that fucking picture of him sitting in the garden, right? But hey, we move in it. But I don't necessarily see what this video or this article, no, what this video basically does. What does it do? Does it make people worried that they shouldn't go out to Shoreditch and they avoid the clubs there, which is, again, is going to clearly affect the club's bottom line and basically leave them without staff until what? later on in the evening which is insane because you'd always see people walking around that's probably the impression in east london the trendy part of east london where people legitimately don't mind sitting outside and having a booze booze up do you know what i mean um whereas for us phew. anyway continues here it says here as follows um Social media users have started share, share their outreach at a video posted by Metropolitan Police depicting them conducting street side searches in London shortage. <laughs> the video was published on the Met Police's Twitter account and with the caption, Task Force officers were out recently doing drug swabs in shortage, a part of a, where a wider operation to ensure the nighttime economy is a safe place to be. The nighttime economy, you know, it could be argued or clubs in general, especially in London, aren't safe because people that go in there are fucking crazy and on drugs. I think they're mostly unsafe because there's not sensible opening hours, right? If people are all having to rush in between 2 or before 2 p 2 a.m. and the person you want to see playing is playing at one forty-five, and then you've got all these white lads in front of you not pushing in and, or just boys in general don't want to let in, it's not going to work. It really isn't. So I think that kind of whole cage thing was definitely a bit of a faux pas when it comes to... um when it comes to all this it really really was um it continues anyway multiple judges uh, and like i said i just don't see the use of this like what's this really gonna do like what are you searching for do you want these people not to go out um you know are you stopping them from going out taking what they're taking and arresting them on the spot fines but again what's on the spot fine and how do you de de determine you know if ket is worth more of a fine than coke or are they all in the same category i don't know but it does seem like a bit of a it does seem like a super British thing to do, pretty useless, you know. It's all good for the optics and shit, but considering how these police officers look, and considering if that was mean shortage, like there's no way, no, there's no way any of these guys are catching me. If they decide to come up and pull up next to me whilst I'm having a bump of kettle or something, I'm blitzing away. Especially off the back of that, you know what I mean, you're you're gonna feel like fucking Sonic running from these guys for sure. Let's quickly play the video of it. <laughs> So it looks like, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like they're searching a lot of immigrants. I don't see a lot of, um, okay, I don't see a lot of Jack Deans or, you know, Danny Mark. I don't know, you know, these kind of cockney lads that always have, you know, they always say their names, their first name and their surname. I don't see a lot of those guys around these videos. And those are mostly the guys that go around in Shoreditch, right? The all right mates, right? The skinny jeans and big bicep army. I don't see none of them getting swabbed. I just see bare immigrants, which again, telling 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 sign of where how we are or the life that we live in shoreditch and also maybe just stand outside shoreditch shoreditch house why don't you do that why do why are you going to the slums why are you going to all the little corners and shit why don't you just stand out of that affluent place where people have to pay a grand a year to be a member of this club why don't you just stand outside there and get people to swap their hands there you'd be in for a big surprise if you did Considering everything like <sighs> I understand that you need to do everything and you just can't stop, you know, policing because we're under COVID. But considering what's going on in this country, considering the amount of despair people are living under, people are still employed, people's families are broken, people's lost their family members, partners, close friends. Um, you know, we're probably going to come out of this into some sort of recession, right? The, like, considering all the issues that's, that's, that's at hand at the moment, is this really a good t use of their resources, of their resources, sorry, of their time when it comes to peace officers? Should they be really concentrating on such frivolous things or they should be focused on other things? Like, what is this? Like, literally, what is this? It makes completely no sense. Um, like I said, I think clubs 
or nightlife in London will be better served if they just left them open longer. If you could have more places open until 6, 7, 8 a.m., you probably would reduce the amount of people actually going out and doing hard drugs. I legitimately think so because people are generally going out mostly to kind of let their hair down and to escape the troubles of everyday life. But if they're able to go to clubs and just enjoy them as actual places to go and listen to good music and to go see people perform or to go connect with a community, maybe they wouldn't you know ramp them up as like these big deal things that oh i'm gonna go see this person play maybe it wouldn't be that big of a deal maybe you could just approach it like a gig and just go and enjoy someone playing have a bit of a boogie and go home but because they all close at certain times which leads to most of these clubs booking the biggest people of all time to fill it in because they want to make sure tickets sell it kind of inadvertently pushing you to make every single night out some sort of semblance some sort of something similar or something akin to fucking project x or something do you know what i mean when really it doesn't need to be that most places you go to in the concert are just places you can go to sit down and have fun listen to music and keep it moving but here in the uk everything is like a big finale everything is like a new year's eve everything's like a halloween like it's just like relax man relax relax and i don't think these sort of thing help i really don't um duh, 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 what are people are saying um vice world news global editor said this doesn't look very legal if a police officers ask you to do a drug swap for no reason just refuse definitely agree with that one police organizations have also been quick to s i guess they can just voluntarily ask you to swab you don't have to stop and swab um i don't think the same applies to stop and search right because it's stop and search if they tell you to stop and they think you're, you know, especially if you're a black dude and they think you've got a knife, you have to stop. If you don't stop, they're going to chase you and fucking do you for fucking resisting arrest, isn't it? Or if then you re if you resist, you get done for resisting arrest with, a, what's the thing with, um, you know, grievous bodily harm or whatever it may be called. The charges will just start stumping out quickly, so. Um, it says, yeah, it continues. And um, whilst I'm at police, waste time swapping people in the propaganda exercise on the behalf of the government, many more vulnerable people will continue to die on our streets, of course. The homelessness problem in the, UK, in the UK, especially in London, has been going crazy. I don't know what happened to everybody in my area who was living in tents in the main kind of city centre bit. I don't know what happened to them, but there's a lot of people that kind of overtook um, part of my city centre towards, what, the middle of 2020, and then suddenly they disappeared. I don't know where those people are now. They're probably not in good shape, I'd imagine. Um, again, like I said, you know, there are people still probably living in temporary housing at the time. I don't know if council houses are at an all-time low. Um, it's just a bleak time to be alive, and this is what they want to spend their time doing. These guys are madness. Um, another person called um, Katya Kowalski, who's a head strategy of UK organization Vault Face or Mixmag. I'm appalled at the recent drug swapping video release of Met Police this weekend. The initiative does nothing to keep the nighttime economy safe, as it Met claims to, on Twitter. Instead, it creates fear, hostility between the public, drug users, and police forces. Of course, and again, like everyone keeps saying, why don't they do these drug swaps at the House of Commons? Uh, you know, at number 10. I'm sure they'd be in for bigger surprises than they do in Shoreditch, but, you know, rules for rules for D, not for me. And, you know, everyone else gets judged or everyone else gets kind of brought back down to earth and we don't and they don't. It's just like, I don't know, man. These people, man, they're fucking awful. Awful, awful human beings. We have to just put up with it for the sake of it.